Hey everybody, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Vivor Tough Tools Half Price Steering Endoscope Model ZX2-D. Shout out to Viva for sending this to me at no cost for the purpose of this review. Before we get it out of the box, let's go over to their website and let's look at it there because there's a bunch of specifications involved with this thing. Okay, so here's the listing over on Vivor's website. They say articulating borescope camera with light, two-way articulated endoscope inspection camera with 6.4 millimeter tiny lens, 5-inch IPS 1080p HD screen, 8 power zoom, 8 LED light snake camera for automotive and plumbing. Gets 5 stars out of 69 reviews on their website. It currently costs $119.99. If you register for an account, the price drops to $102.99. And I will put an affiliate link and some coupon codes below, which may even get you more off of it. Certainly worth a try. Um, picture makes it look pretty nice. The, the, um, the screen itself sits atop a handle you can grip. It has a one meter long snake cable out of it and there are some controls on the handle let's look down and see what else they say 180 degree articulating we said that five inch screen one two four six and eight power digital zoom 180 degree image rotation function that's not the camera turning backwards that means you can flip the screen the camera does turn 180 degree backwards but um you can flip the screen too a uh, 6.4 millimeter ultra tiny camera that is the diameter of the tip eight lights three adjustable brightness levels comes with a 32 gig um, micro sd card uh, we saw all that we'll see in all this um, ip67 waterproof and it does have an overheat um, alarm in case you put it down into hot liquids or something like that and you can also rinse it off under water if you get it all mucky putting it down in a sewer or something 4500 milliamp hour battery we covered that um, I don't know I think it looks pretty interesting I'm excited about that articulating being able to turn the camera you know by that little wheel on the handle i think that can be pretty useful here is some more information here about the lens resolution and the screen resolution i'm hoping it's mostly put together you get a manual steering endoscope oh color manual look at that huh product description product introduction well, oh, pretty nice little manual. Thank God it's not one of those fold-out pamphlets in a hundred different languages. This one looks like this one goes to English for the first few pages, and that looks German. That German sounds look sounds German. And um, yeah, it looks like two languages: English and possibly German, or something like German. You get the um, the handle with the. Oh, that's not very stiff that's pretty I don't want to call it limp I'm used to the ones that are just as stiff as a board I've got a couple of those there's a little cap over the lens boy that is thin I mean compared to one of my others my one of my others my old Harbor Freight one must be this thick and the head must be an inch wide that is definitely tiny oh look at that when I do that ha <laughs> that's that's not creepy at all is it well that's actually kind of cool um here about a few weeks ago actually more than that back in the middle of summer when the mode door motors on my jeep grand cherokee stopped working i was trying to get a picture up in there of the mode motor to see if it was moving when i turned when i you know switched it from defrost to vent you know to heat and um I got my old endoscope up in there and that thing's as stiff as a board and I must have had to bend it and poke it up and bend it and poke it up 25 times before I finally got a picture of it. But that's that's pretty neat looking. Let's get the uh, screen out. You get a USB-C charging cable. Nice to see USB-C. I hope we're finally done with micro USB. 
and we got a connector on the back where no doubt it hooks into the electrical connector there. Got a little button I'm sure that releases it. Oh, we got some controls. Um, power button, okay. A gear for settings, I'm sure. Plus or minus. And that looks like a landscape button. And that looks like camera or video there. So um, let's see if it's got some power. And let's put it on. Let's see how we put it on there. Uh -huh. How you do this? Up, oh, slides right up, doesn't it? Yeah, maybe not. Come on. Well, maybe not. Sure looks like that's what it's supposed to do. Do I need to push the button? I think I needed to push that button. There we go. That's a snug fit. Not that that's a bad thing. And here we go. <gasps> oh, so good. So good. Let's see if it's got some power if I need to charge it. So I'm going to press the power button. Hold it up. There it comes. Up oh, and the light is lit. Oh, and there's my ugly mug. <laughs> Okay, so let's take a look at the buttons on the top, and I'm holding my hand here trying to make sure the camera stays focused. One thing to note about these buttons is they have a pretty good tactile feel to them, but like the button on the far left that says OK and has the power icon underneath it, a short press operates the top function, a long press, like two seconds or more, operates the bottom function. So for the OK button, power button, a long press turns it on when it's off, and a long press turns it off when it's on. Pressing OK picks out selection, confirms your selections when you're in the menu system. The next button over, the gear icon, it brings up the menu system and backs you back out of it again. The next button over with the minus and the little circular arrow to the left, uh, short press zooms out and a long press rotates the screen 180 degrees anti-clockwise. The next button over is pretty much the polar opposite. The plus zooms you in. For a short press, the long press rotates the screen clockwise. The next button over that looks like the little landscape, it brings up the system where you can look at the pictures and the videos that you've that you've previously taken that are stored on the card. The next button over that has the camera at the top and the video camera at the bottom, short press takes a picture, long press starts or stops a video recording. Now, down on the handle of the machine, the top button with the little sun icon, it quick press on that, turns the brightness up and down on the on the LEDs on the camera. Long press doesn't do anything that I could tell. The camera icon does the same thing as the camera video button on the screen itself. Short press takes a picture. Long press starts and stops a video. Now let's take a look at the menu system. So I'm going to press menu to bring the menu system up. And remember this is not a touch screen so you have to use the plus and minus and OK buttons and the menu button to move you around and back you out. The top button um, allows you to change the language on the screen and I'll show you the different languages that are there. I'm not going to tell you what they are because honestly I don't know what some of them are. So starting with English and then going down and then back to English. I'm going to back this out and date and time obviously sets the date and time I'll show you that real quick. I ha obviously haven't done it yet either. I'm going back out of that. Date label is just a check mark that checks it and unchecks it. And I think that just puts the date and the time on your video recordings and your photos. At least it puts it on the screen anyway. So going down, screensaver picks out a time that it can go to the screensaver. So let's go down and take a look at that. And you have off 3 minutes, 5 minutes, and 10 minutes. And then automatic shutdown does uh, what, what it says it does. And our options there are 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, and off. 
and next one down formats it for that formats and erases the video card I'm not going to do that default setting sets it all the way back to its defaults and I'm not going to do that and version just shows us a version number and that's it. Okay, so I have my video camera mounted to the handle of the Vivor inspection camera. So it's looking at the screen because I kind of want you to see what I'm seeing. But I'm also going to take a video and we're going to look at the video. I got this motorcycle sitting here. Yeah, I know. It's very dusty. I haven't done anything with it for several years. I'm going to be fixing that. Maybe not soon, but I will be fixing that. And um, we're going to look up the exhaust pipe. I have one of the mufflers off and I have one of the spark plugs out. So we're going to be looking up the muffler, up the exhaust pipe, and we're going to be looking in the spark plug hole to see how well we can see stuff. So I'm going to start my recording now by pressing and holding the camera button on it. And you'll see it says the video is starting. Let's start by going up the... Um, the exhaust pipe. I was going to say something else, but I'm not. Okay, so let's look up the exhaust pipe and see if we can see the exhaust valve in here. And I'm going to steer it around a little bit using, you kind of, I've been practicing at this, and you kind of got to steer it around both by turning, twisting the cable in your hands, but also by the steering thing. It can be a little awkward. But, um, you get better and better at it with use. Sorry for waving it around. So there's the back of the exhaust valve. There, let me come out a little bit. There is the oil dripping down past the guide. So that was pretty easy to do. There's the um, back of the exhaust valve. Let's go in through the spark plug hole. And let's see what we see in the spark plug hole. And spark plug hole is right there. Let me straighten my camera out. There we go. Am I in? There we go. So there are the cylinder walls. <laughs> you can see how much I've ridden this engine in the 30 years since I've built it. There's still cross hatching on the cylinder walls. There is the top of the piston. And now the really cool thing, now that it's in there, I'm going to rotate it all the way around and see if I can look back up at the valves. Oop, I went the wrong way. Let's go the other way so I'm not looking at the stem of the, of the camera. All right, there we go. Go back in a little bit. I think I have turned the brightness of it down, so let's turn the... There we go, now we're full bright. And there are our valves. Honestly, I, I love the ability to go in and to look right back up back the way it came in. There we go. There's another view of the valves. So that is, that is pretty darn good, I think. That's a, that's a great ability to be able to go into your cylinder with the camera and look back up at the valves without having to try and go in through an exhaust pipe or the intake. I like that a lot. Okay, trying to do this with the camera mounted on the back is really, really awkward and I don't think I'm doing a very good job of it. So I'm just going to show you the videos it takes from here on in. Okay, so this is the video that was recorded directly to the SD card. We're looking up the exhaust pipe of the motorcycle again. There's the back of the exhaust valve. Remember, this camera does not have any type of video stabilization, so it's all going to require you being as steady as possible to keep it from shaking. But it gives you a pretty good close-up view of things. I'm kind of kind of surprised how 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 decent it is. This is the same motorcycle engine. I went down the spark plug holes. There's the cross hatch on the cylinder walls again. There's the top of the piston. Now I'm going to use the steerable thing on the camera. And I got some gook on the, on the lens a little bit. That happens quite a bit if you drag the, the camera on things. I'm going to rotate the camera around to look back up. Now I'm going reverse and going up the other way using the steerable function so that we can see the valves. And once again, I've got the, 
the light turned down to low so now I'm going to switch it back to high had to go off first now we got full light on it and now we're looking right back at the valves and back up through the spark plug hole this is the under dash of my 98 Jeep Grand Cherokee where the mode door doesn't work anymore so I'm trying to figure out where that mode motor actually is now I'm sitting in the driver's seat with just the lens popped up and I followed that rod back and there is the mode motor back there and you can kind of see the wires going to it and it is not moving when I tell it to switch modes which sucks now we're going down the um, oil fill hole on my Jeep CJ7 and we're looking at under the valve cover and you can see the push rods holes in the head the push rods go through all the sealer I put on it trying to make it not leak out the valve cover there's the rest of the push rods down the down the line you can see a valve spring see the rockers there in the top of the push rods and we're gonna go we're gonna try and go back a little further and there you can see one of the valve springs back there so it gives you a pretty good well, let's take a quick look at the review function on it so we can see how we review on the screen the pictures and videos we've taken you push the little button that looks like a landscape and that pops open our reviews and you can remember it's not a touch screen so you can't tap on the screen but we move the plus and you can see maybe the outline moving and then you press the OK button and then you can bring up that's a picture I took this was a drawing I had made quite some time ago and lost and using this I found it down behind my bench a subscriber once asked me for those measurements and I said I lost them well hey if you're that subscriber I found them I'll send you the photo and um, you use the landscape button again to back back out and you just keep moving down until you see all the different pictures and it it shows you in the upper left hand corner with a little icon whether it's a picture or a video and at the bottom it gives you the name and again the file type JPEG or AVI and um, these are all pictures and here's a good picture here let's take a quick look at it so you can see from the text on there that the, the camera's capable capable of taking a really good picture so my phone will even read that barcode so it's quite it's quite capable of taking a clear picture and we'll take a quick look at an AVI oh let's find one let's go let's go back one there's an AVI there and okay and then you press okay again to start it and as you can see you can watch them quite quite easily on the device itself so that works really well that's a pretty terrible picture there that's one I was trying to get under the dash of my Grand Cherokee so I could show that that mode door motor and I just could not get it poked up where I wanted it to be but press OK again that stops it then you press the um, landscape button and you can back yourself all the way back so after two weeks of use and abuse, what are some of my likes and dislikes about the Vivor steerable endoscope camera? Well, let's get the dislike out of the way because there's only one thing that kept coming back and nagging at me over and over again. And that's the fact that the camera lead comes out of the bottom and not out of the back of, say, the back of the unit, like the back of the screen. For example, the old Harbor Freight inspection camera I have that just seems more intuitive to me and easier to use than coming out the bottom of the handle. But like I say, after a few days of use, I got used to it and it wasn't a big deal anymore. It is very flexible, so it's not a big deal. I just It just seemed a little less intuitive to me than if it came out facing in the direction of what you're working on. Other than that, I really couldn't find anything to dislike. What I liked about it, well, first off, it functioned flawlessly the whole time. I did not have a single issue with its functionality. The, the images were very good. The videos were very good. Pictures of parts up under the dash of the Grand Cherokee were easily good enough to read the part number. And if there was a label with a barcode, my phone would scan the barcode. The videos were clear enough, even very close up. 
to see if you have any kind of issues. And you know, let's face it, that steerable end, that is a game changer. To be able to go like into a spark plug hole and then reverse it to look back up at the top of the head, top of the inside of the head, that's amazing. Also, I found uses for this that I didn't think I would have. Say, for example, you're going down, you know, a pipe in your kitchen sink because you got, think you've got uh, something stuck down there. And if you put it in like this, every time you bump it into something nasty, the camera's going to be occluded and you're not going to be able to see anything. But if you rotate it like that and go down in, then once you're past where it's stuck or where all the nasty stuff is, you can straighten it back out. Or every few inches, you can straighten it back out and look to see where you're going. I found that to be very valuable. The controls on the handle are extremely well placed, for at least for my size of hands. The buttons work well. They do exactly what they're going to say. And the steerable control, and it's all usable left or right-handed. The screen is big and bright. The functionality of the buttons on top is very easy to use. Um, you can take the camera card out and put it in your computer. It has USB charging. There is a flashing red light for when it's charging and a green light for when it's charged. So, it really functions quite well. So now that we have the testing and the likes and the gripes out of the way, do I think this is something you should buy? If you don't have an existing endoscope camera, or if you're using one that connects to your phone and you don't like the idea of using your thousand dollar phone under the hood of your car or under your basement or places like that, and I don't blame you, I don't want to do that. Plus, I've got one of those endoscopes that plugs into the phone and the app doesn't work on my last two phones. I have to keep an old phone around just to use it. It's also 16 feet long and is as stiff as a board and if you're trying to use it on something close up, it's very, very awkward to use. So if you don't have one or if you have one you don't like, I think this one is excellent for the price. It works very well and you know what? The price is right and we know that. So I will put links to this below. It'll be an affiliate link of course and I'll put coupon codes below. You might even get it for a little less using all of that. So I just want to say thanks to Vivor again for sending this out. Thanks to you guys for watching and liking and subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.